right, next right. team up is Parallel Stories. Um, so I'm sure that most people in the audience can relate to this problem, but if you have read a book recently or watched a movie or some story and you just want the ending to be different or you want to write your own piece of the story that is a branch off of that, that's what Parallel Stories set out to uh, create for you as a community where you can uh, collaboratively build branches of stories in parallel um, well, parallel stories, exactly what the title says. I'm going to hand it over to our wonderful team. I'll tell you more. Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining us today. My name is Jamie Lau, and these are my wonderful teammates, Jennifer Ju, Raspi Carr, and Mika Page, and we are Parallel Stories. So have any of you ever read a story and thought, I didn't really like that ending? Or maybe you loved the story and wanted to read an alternate ending, well, or perhaps even write your own. This is what Parallel Story set out to do. Our app allows users to read and write stories with the feature to create alternate storyline or endings. For our tech stack, we use React on the front end and Firebase on the back end as our server and real-time database. We also uh, took advantage of Firebase authentication for login via Google and Firebase hosting to deploy our app. We use React without Redux because we didn't feel need for global state on the front end as Firebase is a state management, state management tool. For our web application, uh, we just need to listen for data changes on related components. And we also use Material UI for our user interface and the rich text editor Quill for story writing. And now I'm going to pass it on to Jennifer to walk you through a user story. Thank you, Jamie. So a user can view all published stories on the Read Stories page. They can click on a story and see the tree visualization of it, where each branch is a parallel story that another user has created and published. Our current branch is highlighted in orange, and the parent or root of this entire tree is shown to the left. And this tree was created using React Tree Graph, which takes in JSON data. So uh, let's say if I want to read a story called Angry Birdie, and I really love the story except for the ending. But so I'm going to write my own, and <laughs> I'll start from the scene right before the ending. I'll use Quill and write write my new ending there. And when I hit publish. Uh, React HTML parser will sanitize this data and save it to our database as a string of HTML tags and text. This protects a web application from cross-scripting attacks, and when another user views what I've just written, they should see the same text with the same text formatting. Now I will pass the mic off to Roz, who will tell you more about our database. Here's a look at our data schema. Using a NoSQL database, we avoid redundancy by reducing duplicates and holding references instead of nesting, which normalizes our data. Database calls provide information to render our components when mounting to page, and the listener provides real-time updates to, to the client. To make our web application as scalable as possible, we reduce database calls, which provides a more seamless user experience. In the future, we hope to use database we hope to move database functions to Firebase Cloud Functions. This would essentially move the logic and hev heavy lifting to our back end, where the data lives. And now here's Mika, who will talk to you about our UI and writing to our database. Thanks, Raz. So the second main challenge for our project was how to translate a complicated idea into a simple and intuitive UI. And we accomplished this with a story tree visualization and a stepper that shows a linear progression of the other branches of whatever story the user happens to be re reading. Um, and then when a user writes a story, uh, it's a simple action on their part, but it's a large operation on our end to make sure that the database remains in sync as, as it's updated. And when a user publishes that story, we treat those scenes as immutable because in a tree data structure, the subtrees rely on the parents to hold their references. So an edited or deleted root scene would render its storylines nonsensical or even irretrievable as orphan subtrees. Um, so throughout this project, we uh, expanded our knowledge of React, we familiarized ourselves with the NoSQL database, and we learned the importance of an intuitive UI and a well thought out data architecture. So check out our uh, code on GitHub, check out the app itself on parallel-stories.com so you can write your own parallel story. Thank you guys very much for listening. Wow, that, that was very cool. I like the um, I like I like that idea a lot. I don't know where they I don't know where they came up with the idea, but I've I've uh, wanted to see something like that built for a long time. I think um, 
it's like if you the writing prompts read it people you know give a prompt and they kind of fork it in many different ways but the visualization of it in a comment thread is terrible compared to that where um you know i don't know i don't know if someone would write the 50 shades of gray on this but i could see like people writing fun versions of of stories and then making it more like a game too uh, I'm just saying that because Fifty Shades of Grey was a fan fiction of Twilight. It's not because I'm a big fan of Fifty Shades of Grey, but well, I'm not gonna say anything anymore. <laughs> Let's move on. Keep it moving. Yeah. I also like how they how they decide to not use Redux because of the similarities to Firebase. I thought that's a it's an interesting choice. I see teams branch on commonly, and um, it's always interesting to see like people's reasoning behind that. <laughs> 